Hey guys, Darren back again. Today we're going to look at the Neo Geo CD and convert its power supply to something a little bit more common and easy to use in your country. The factory Japanese power supply has this weird three pin plug which you don't see on any other console. It consists of 10 volts DC, 5 volts DC and ground. Now we, we can replace the 10 volts with 9 volts, that's no problem. And the way we're going to do it is to mount uh, a little round DC barrel jack on the rear of the case and feed in the appropriate voltage. I'm going to use 9 volts 3 amps DC wide for center positive and feed that into an L78S05 which is rated for 2 amps instead of the regular 1 amp on the 7805. So with the console on the bench let's just open it up and take a look what we're dealing with. There's just four screws, one on each corner, which are really simple Phillips head screws to take out. So lift the lid, just watch this ribbon cable which connects the CD-ROM drive. Just lift that out of the way and put the case aside. Then just start unscrewing, you know, the bits and pieces that get in the way, like this little shield, um, take its screws out and then take out all the screws that mount the board. I'll just put this part in fast forward just so you can see what I've done, but you don't really need to see me take out screws. So once those are all out, I would go ahead and disconnect this power cable as well, and then flip the console up on its end, and you'll notice there's two more screws to take out on the edge. That just holds the board in uh, around the sockets to give it more strength. Then just flip the whole board forward, and we're gonna see the underside and the solder points. In particular, this power input jack which has the three points, and they actually have alternate solder points. You can see the traces lead to these two large points here on the right. So if you want to solder to those points, you can. We'll probe these in a second with a multimeter and work out what's what. But taking a look at our socket and our voltage regulator, let's look at how we're going to wire this up and how it all makes sense. So let's plug in our Japanese power supply. I'm using a step-down transformer here in Australia because our input is 240 volts AC and the console only needs 100 volts AC. So I'm just giving it a step down just so it won't explode. I've got a multimeter off to my left and I'm just going to turn it on. Um, you know, we're not worried about the CD drive being disconnected. It'll still work. And we're going to probe and just work out these voltage points. Okay, so the middle one is going to be the 5 and the far left is our you know nine to ten volts input and obviously our right one with our black probe is our ground so five in the middle and you know nine volts will be on our left so with that in mind and we look at our wires i'm going to use you know black for ground yellow for probably the nine and the red for the five you can use any color wires you like whatever makes sense and whatever you've got laying around the gauge of wire doesn't really matter as well. Just, you know, a couple of millimeters uh, will be fine. I'm just tinning up these wires now and I like to twist them before I start just to make sure there's no loose strands of wire that are gonna short circuit something. So just strip off your wires, tin them up, and then let's aim to solder these to the input points on the board. I've just added some flux and I'm gonna add some basic solder just to refresh these old solder joints with some modern solder. I would always recommend refreshing old solder points with modern solder in case they're dried out and a bit crusty. It just makes your life a lot easier when you come to solder on the new wires. Now ultimately we're going to mount the socket at the back there and drill a hole. But first of all we need to determine what the pins do and what their polarity is. So what we're looking for is a positive result. If you have a minus sign in front of your voltage you've got your wires around the wrong way. Now I've just fed in 12 volts there, don't worry about that. Um, we're gonna use nine ultimately, but just make sure you know which pin is center positive and which pin is the ground pin. So it's just usually two, the outside third pin is not used. We then need to work out where we're gonna mount this voltage regulator because it does get hot and we need a spot like down here that can dissipate the heat. We'll just run our wires up to the socket and That'll be fine to so try and pick a spot on the board like this, this one that will allow the heat to just sort of dissipate out through the metal shielding. Now I'm just gonna spread these legs a little bit and you know, just give myself a little bit more room to solder the wires onto this small regulator. You can do something similar, um, but that's what I recommend. So once again, we're gonna tin up our wires and solder them to the regulator. 
This next step is a little bit tricky. So we're gonna actually splice the wire in the middle and you know you may have to restrip the end as the casing slips around. The reason we're gonna make a middle point to solder to is we actually wanna attach this to more than one point. So basically two points. So we may as well just use one long wire and just make a third contact point. So the two ends and the middle. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So with the wires ready, let's take a look at our board. Now you can use these two outer points here if you, if you need to, but I'm just gonna use the three in the middle because it's not too difficult. The input yellow wire is gonna go on the left and that's the nine volts. The ground's gonna go on the right because that's our ground return. And you see how I'm just using the center of that wire to solder that all together. The red wire is just the five volts coming in off the regulator. So it's gonna be down here and the wires run under the board and then ultimately also the other end of the wire runs up to the socket at the back there. If we take a look at our socket and just unscrew the, the nut and the washer, we're gonna to need to drill a 7.5 millimeter hole, you know, thereabouts. I've got this little Christmas tree drill bit, which I like to use on plastics. And you know, it's about the third step down for me to get that right size. I'd like to mount the socket around about here somewhere on the case. But looking at the rear, unfortunately that label is sort of in the way. So I might end up drilling just to the, to the side of that right here on the plastic to kind of make it look a bit neater. So, you know, just mount your drill bit, hold it steady. Don't, there's no need to take the board out of the case. Just take it slow and I wouldn't overdrive the drill too fast. Just kind of go slow and control that step. Just one, two, three steps for me. And then you get a nice clean hole and you're good to go. Pull out the plastics and let's screw this socket in place. So if you've cut the wires a little bit short and things don't quite reach, just start again. I actually mucked this up the first time, so I had to remake my wires a little bit longer and then it all just fits really nicely. Just put the socket through the hole, put the washer on and then the nut just to tighten it all down. Then just grab some small pliers and tighten up that nut just so it doesn't come loose. Just a couple of turns is all you need. This is all just soft plastic. Let's put our wires on the voltage regulator. Left is the input, which is our nine volts. So the yellow is the nine volts in, ground is in the center, and the output is just the red on the right hand side. Put the screw in the hole and place it in place and then just screw it down. That's the easiest way I found to do this because it's a little bit fiddly. Once that's in, you'll see it's pretty neat install and we're ready to test. Plug this in and let's just take a quick look at our socket. Yours should look something like this. Plug in the nine volts, cross your fingers, and let's see if the console is happy. Yeah, it is, awesome, great job. So just put the screws back in the board, put the metal shield back in, and if you've bumped that little yellow wire, which is this one right here, just make sure that's connected all the way back down to this end. This little table here is the region control. Check out the video in the pop-up or in the description. So in my first video, I showed you how to modify the region from Japanese to English effectively from Japanese to USA, because this, this is a 60 Hertz console. Then just put your lid back on, plug in the CD-ROM ribbon and put the lid on. Let's give this a test and that's it. It's a very simple modification. I think you're good to go. Just panning across to the TV. Yep, we're, we're booting up okay, which is a great start. And it'll read the CD which is great, push start at this point and you're all good. It's gonna load the game and happy days. Enjoy your gaming. Thanks so much for watching guys. Make sure you check out part one if you haven't already and I'll see you on the next one.